Alabama, and Texas A&M. That is the one. All right, so let's go on and break it down here. I'm going to go on and swap it over to the screen so you can look at the stats, etc. cetera. Uh, if you look at the, the excitement index, which was a 3.67, uh, the game was surprisingly always expected Alabama to win this game, regardless of what the situation was, etc. Just a weird, weird spot. Uh, Alabama wins 24 to 20. They won yardage 397 to 323. They won yards per play 5.7 to 4.4. They won third downs 36% to 29%. They won the rushing battle 286 yards to 70. And they won drive points 21 to nothing. The only way that AM was able to score in this game was if Alabama gave them short fields, and they did it multiple times. Four turnovers for Alabama, which is not a common occurrence. Uh, look, Texas A&M did have a fourth down failure, I guess two. Uh, Alabama missed two field goals of 35 and 47 yards. Uh, Jalen Milrow at quarterback is a bit of a liability. It, when you are one-dimensional against a good, even, even just average SEC football team, you're going to run into problems. And that's exactly what we had happen here. Uh, this was... Exactly what can happen when you have a backup quarterback that is not super comfortable in the offense. Now, they tried to come out and do some different things with that offense. And Milrow has to learn ball security. I mean, that's the that's the biggest thing. And then, of course, it, it pressed over, and uh, it was Jace McClellan, I believe, that, that fumbled the other one. But one interception late in the first. I mean, it was three turnovers in the first half. But four turnovers and three of them, led to 17 points directly for Texas A&M. Just brutal. Absolutely brutal. And it felt like it felt like we were watching last year's game all over again when Alabama could not get a third and short to keep the ball away from A&M late. It's exactly what it felt like. And early in the game, it felt like 2015 Alabama Ole Miss when Alabama had five turnovers in a revenge spot and Ole Miss had nothing and you had some crazy kind of plays going on, and of course, there were some catches by Evan Stewart that were just unbelievable. (laughs) These guys are talented if you just give them the opportunity to do so. Uh, The last play of the game, that's the thing that everybody is all shook up about, right? The last play of the game, to me, was not an awful play call, just on its face. The ball was not supposed to go to the one-yard line. That ball is a good play call if you have an incredibly accurate quarterback and a quarterback and a receiver that have a ton of chemistry, that have done that rep a thousand billion times, right? Because if you watch what Evan Stewart did over in the corner of the end zone, that ball from Haynes King is supposed to come out right as he's making that turn. It's not supposed to be a delay. Like, he threw it, and it was... Even if he had caught the ball, it was closer to the two-yard line than it was to the end zone because he's headed the wrong direction. You're supposed to be able to make that cut and immediately turn back around and get the ball. Like, that's the corner of the end zone play. So it's not like a terrible play call. It's It was just terrible in that moment because of the players that you were trying to get to do it. And this has been Jimbo's problem forever. He's asking his players to do things that they are not capable of doing. It, we've talked about this numerous times. You're not setting your players up for success with this incredibly complicated offense that requires just precision and exact accuracy and all that. You need to find open plays to let your guys go out and just run free. You have freak athletes on your team. What are you doing? It's insane. So, regardless, uh, Tyrone Davis jumps in. Hey, bud, what's up? Holy Sal jumps in. Stewart didn't go deep enough to sell that route. I do agree with that. And that's the other problem, is you've got a freshman and a backup quarterback, right, who was the start at the beginning of the year, and then he got pulled, and blah, blah, blah. You, you've got guys that don't practice this enough. Like, you can't run that specific of a play that requires that kind of accuracy and that kind of precision and timing if, if you don't have the dudes, Bottom line, TriStar Football jumps in. Uh, He said both college game day and SEC Nation will be in Knoxville. Uh, I think Tennessee can beat Alabama. Uh, I I agree. I agree. I think that line was 9.5 at DraftKings last night. Which, by the way, 
Go use BetUS. Just saying. BetUS.com. Um, I, if it, anything, if, I'm going to talk about it on the BetUS College Football Show on Tuesday. That's what I'm going to do. But regardless, uh, first time since 89 that both teams are undefeated when they're playing. Yes, that is true. Uh, TriStar says uh, people will stop saying Tennessee hasn't played anybody. Tennessee has three wins against top 25 teams, two of the three versus top 20 teams, two were on the road. Uh, who has Michigan played? Uh, Michigan hadn't really played anybody, to be completely fair. Um, at bottom line, uh, TriStar says Alabama needs Bryce Young to beat Alabama. I would agree with that uh, slightly. I think what Alabama needs is to not turn the football over. you know. But at the same time, I do think Tennessee is going to put up points. And it, I, I don't know how easy that is for Alabama to do without Bryce Young, right? I just, I, I think it's, there are ways that they could win without Bryce, for sure. However, I don't think it's as likely. I'll say that. I will certainly say that. Uh, looking at the stats here, Milrow, 12 out of 19, 111 yards passing, three touchdowns, one interception. Haynes King, 25 out of 46, 253, two touchdowns, one pick. Um, he was, like, those those 21 incompletions, I would bet, like, 19 of them were throwing the ball away as Will Anderson was breathing down his neck. That tied defense was pretty good tonight. There were some insane catches made by Aggie wide receivers, and then there were some where the receiver was just wide open. You know, they found a hole in the zone, uh, which Alabama does not run often, but they found spots for them, and, you know, guys like Moose Muhammad, uh, Devin A. Chain didn't do a lot as far as, you know, actually catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, but Donovan Green, you know, had a couple of receptions. Uh, Evan Stewart was the dude. I mean, eight receptions, 106 yards. It just, it, Texas A&M put up a lot of fight. And the way that they put up a lot of fight was turnovers. Bottom line, Alabama won this game with a negative three turnover margin. They are putrid at forcing turnovers this year. I don't know what it is because they've got guys. they got dudes. Just it's it's the bounce of the ball. It's all kinds of different things. Which, by the way, Alabama fumbled the ball three times, lost all three of them. That's not a common occurrence. So uh, read into that what you will. But uh, but yes, A and M got seventeen points off turnovers last night and uh, only scored twenty points. Just ridiculous. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.